Hello. Hi, Daisy. So good to have you here. It's my pleasure to be doing this. <laughs> All right. So um, I have my mic clipped on the inside. So can you hear me okay? Usually I do this test before I record my video. So you can be my, yeah, you can give me a thumb up or um, where to say hi. Okay. Hopefully you can hear me. All right. So uh, my name is Jenny Liu. If you haven't met me, uh, my channel is all about um, self-care through self-healing practices like Tai Chi, Qigong, Yoga, um, Acupressure. So today's focus is on Tai Chi. And this is completely beginner friendly. We're really just going to unpack one move in the 24 form Tai Chi. Um, so even if you want to be seated on a chair, that is okay too. We're going to warm up for about 15 minutes or so, practice a standing meditation, Zhan Zhuang, and then we'll go ahead and unpack. So we'll go through the move, the lower body move, upper body move, and then coordinate everything. So if you are a uh, Tai Chi practitioner, um, whether you're new or a long-term pra practitioner, there's for Tai Chi, there's this um, circularity, continuity, um, so we're going to find all of that today. <laughs> all right, so let's warm up first. Um, yeah, feel free to say hi in the chat. I might look um, over there from time to time. So plant your feet about hip width apart, shoulder width apart if you're standing with me, and just soften. Let's root and ground. Soften the hip joints. Drop your tailbone so then your back is straight. We'll spend the first, like, um, 12 12, 15 minutes, 12 to 13 minutes to warm up. Okay, so relax your shoulders, softly bend the knees, and just let your arms relax out to the side. We're gonna warm up the joints first. So as you move your hands, in order to strengthen or make a joint more mobile or stable, um, you want to make sure you can feel the muscle groups, surrounding muscle groups. So you need to be able to feel, can I feel my forearms a little bit? Can I feel the muscles in my hand a little? So basically, every single class I teach for Tai Chi or Qigong, we don't just dive straight into the forms. We need to spend some time to let the mind and body come to the same place. And this will help energy and blood to circulate better. Inhale. Inhale and exhale, taking your time. Yeah, so you can do this even, this is your first time practicing. We're just simply warming up, and just feeling your body. So chest open, palms. I know I'm making this office, I'm gonna come closer. And then you're gonna just really deliberately causing a little bit, right? So a little bit of tension. And then when you come back, and then you're gonna go the other side. So coordinate with your breath, inhale, and exhale. So unlike our yoga class where I always, um, you know, I'll always recommend or encourage you to do 100%. For Tai Chi, if you can see, or right, the traditional Tai Chi sign or uh, the sign, <laughs> yeah, so the yin and yang sign, um, it's never it's never like 100% to zero, so there's that harmony and balance. Okay, so I'm going to step back. So about 70% is okay. That's why we never lock a joint in our practice. We don't want to impede energy circulation. And I'm going to go the other side. Take your time in and out. Breathing in and breathing out. So relax the shoulders. And from here, just give yourself a nice shake and wiggle. Hands on your hips. Just go into a gentle hip circle. So we are going to unpack um, brush knee twist step today, which is the fourth move in uh, 24 form, the short form Tai Chi. If we have time, uh, if you have questions, I'll take it um, towards the end of this. Okay, and then go the other side. And in order to really get the most out of this live stream, since you are spending time from, you know, your Saturday afternoon or maybe Saturday morning, depending on where you're tuning in from, um, let's give it our best. Let's really be here and have a beginner's mind and really um, learn this and then um, embody the practice and really feel it. How do I stay centered and grounded while the arms are moving, my legs are trying to stay stable um, as we move? So rock your pelvis a little bit. 
good. And then we're going to do a little bit of uh, posterior tilt, anterior tilt. Yeah, do this a few times. Posterior is just you're going to tilt the tailbone down, right back. And when you're doing the anterior, you're tilting forward. So hopefully you can roll out some of that soreness. Yeah, I already taught my yoga class this morning. So I um, already felt my body and feeling my body again. <laughs> you can do this on the chair too. Okay, so feel your lower dantian, right? Your physical energy center or dantian. Dan literally means energy. Tian means field. So it's field of elixir. In yoga, it is our second chakra. In Tai Chi, we call it lower dantian. So about two inches below your navel, third way in. If you can, put your mind in your lower dantian. So we call it in Chinese, yi shou dantian. So it literally means your mind guarding your dantian. So just really feel that. You want to guard your lower dantian, your physical energy center. We need to have a strong physical center, um, energy center to right, support, support the upper, your middle dantian and your upper. Okay, great. Just shake out. We'll do a little bit of pouring exercise as we are going to do weight transfer throughout the today's practice. So when you're doing pouring exercise, if this is your first time, all you're doing, you're really just shifting your weight to one side by softening that knee, come through the center, soften the knee to the other side. And your torso is going to stay fairly upright. That means we're not going to jet the hip side to side. That's not really weight pouring, <laughs> right? Soften the knees and we're just gonna pour the weight. And you can imagine you have warm healing, oceanic water <laughs> full of healing minerals, right? All the way up to your belly button. And we're just kind of pouring that from one side. You can feel that weight, right? 90% we're gonna shift over, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, and going over, pouring everything over here, six, seven, six, 60, 70, 80, 90. So you always have the other foot supporting you. So it's never like, you know, zero and 100%. We're going to come back. So do that a few times. Just feel that. This is just side to side. Relax your chest, your shoulders. And there are times if you feel more comfortable or more centering. So instead of looking at the screen, um, I don't know where your screen's at. Mine is, um, I'm projecting my uh, laptop onto a TV. So directly in front of me, I can see you better this way. Um, you can either look directly in front of you or if you need to gaze down, just so you can focus on the inside, that's fine. Because we're gonna slowly do some balancing exercise. So pour your weight all the way to your right leg. We are mirror images of each other. I'm going to try to do as much as I can today for the mirror. Once we do the brush knee, I don't know how that's going to work out. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, so you're going to slowly bring your weight over. So open your left foot a little bit, and then you're going to come into an empty foot stance. Okay, so let me make sure I'm not off the screen. Okay, so your... Um, your right foot is going to be on the front because I turn around. I just wanted to show you and your left foot is on the back, okay? Drop your tailbone and just feel. Shoulders directly above your hip joints. Uh, about 90% of the weight is on the back leg, and then the half of your big toe is touching the floor. So how do we know we're really balanced? So then if you slowly lift your front leg up and then lower, you do not have to shift the weight too much. So everything is grounded on your back leg, and really the left, your your right leg your front leg is just going to come up very very light yeah so if this is okay for you we'll practice with the arms if you can if you want you can hold on to the side so like this imagine there's an energy towel behind your knee your toes are pointed and on the way down as we exhale we press the energy and then flex at the ankle okay do that maybe a few more times inhale on your way up Exhale on your way down. Slower, the better. Slower, a little bit more challenging. And for those of you that are really strong, you're really centered and stable, add this next move with me. So instead of just moving the leg, if you can, on your way down, soften the supporting knee, lower your stance. Yeah, so you're training your bottom leg to be stronger. Inhale. 
and exhale. Good, let's squeeze in two more. Breathing in and breathing out. Okay, and then slowly just shake out and you can tap the leg you just moved up and down. And I'm sure you can feel the back leg too because it was taking most of your body weight. So just tap around the hip joints and keep those knees soft, soft bouncing. These movements help to regenerate cartilage. Um, we also want to make sure we take care of the knee. So center of the kneecaps, you're going to face your second toes. Okay, so softly bounce a little bit. We'll shift over to the other side. Breathing out, roll the shoulders off and back. Give yourself a nice shake. Good, so sink your hips again. All right, we're just gonna pour the weight again. A couple of times you wanna feel you're pouring those healing, warm oceanic water from one side to the other. So when you're shifting your weight to your left side now, you're gonna open your right foot, right? We're mirrors of each other. And then bring yourself over. Then your left foot, now it's gonna be on the front. So I'll just give you my profile view for a little bit. You wanna make sure shoulders aligned over the hips so that we're not this way or this way right? Okay, right here. Relax a little bit, sinking, rooting, grounding, breathing into the lower abdomen. And then we're going to test to see, do I feel stable if I lift my leg up? Yeah, just do a few times. If you don't uh, want to lift the leg up too high, you just do the best you can. Okay, all right. And then we're going to thread the energy towel underneath the thigh, lifting up. And pressing down. If you can, add your um, pointing and the flexing. Okay, just do this a few more times. And again, if you feel really strong, you can actually lower your stance, get a little bit shorter on the way down. Yeah, so exercise your bottom leg. And your breathing is really important. So coordinate your breath with your movement. Exhale. One more time. All right, maybe maybe one more. In and out. <sighs> Good. And from here, just tap out. Tap your hip all around. And here, your intention, your mind, is to let as you tap. Right, just let it, let the soreness. If there's um, soreness or achiness or stagnation, energy stagnation. As you tap, you're just going to kind of let all that go. Flow out your toes. It'll go to Mother Earth and turn into compost. <laughs> okay, so tap around and then give your back a nice tap. And just kick your legs back a little bit. And a little bit of lifting up. Yeah, again, always make sure you're stable. If you need a chair next to you, just hold on to the chair. Even if you have to be seated, it's okay. Okay, all right, we're going to rock a little. So to my side, you know this one. So up onto the toes, down on the heels, front and back a few times. Yeah, just rock a few times. And this is a great exercise to practice for balance, stability. You can squeeze this in, right? Everybody's busy, but you can do this when you're brushing your teeth. So two minutes. I guarantee you feel your legs if you really do your best. So all 10 toes helping you. You can lift the arms back and then going forward. Okay, when you get really good, you can also just practice on one leg, practice the other. Okay, gently tap a little bit. Shake out. Give your back like a little nice shake right here. We're going to rub the palms. Set lots of warm healing energy to our knees, we're gonna use them. So warm healing hands over your knees. So right here, just kind of hold. And then from here, maybe gentle softening, extending, and then just make circle. Circle one side and the other. Okay, good. And then slowly just rounding your spine, bringing yourself back up. One more nice shake. And then let's interlace the fingers, get the upper body a nice stretch. Okay, so pressing your palms to face the sky. Okay. Little gentle rocking right here. Take a breath in. Uh, when you breathe out, 
pressing the palms up, we're going to gently twist, right? So twist from your center, from your core to your left side. And if you can, as you're twisting to your left, you're going to try to keep your pelvis still facing forward. So not everything's going to go with you, but feel the stability. Okay, we're going to reference this later in our posture. Inhale. When you exhale, so gently twist, elongate sides both sides of your body, and then softening towards the center. And one more time. Inhale. And as you exhale, press up a little bit more. So kind of push that left hip a little bit to the front so it doesn't get dragged to the back. And slowly coming back. Hopefully you feel a little bit warmer and energy flowing a little bit better. Row the shoulders, front, back. We'll go the other side. So interlace your finger this time, if you can, with the other thumb on top, right? My right thumb always want to be on top, right? I'm already, so again, I'm just going to deliberately to just kind of, kind of disrupt my brain a little bit. So go the other side. Yeah, wake up your brain. All right, once you're here, rock a little. Soften the knees, breathe into your lower dantian. When you exhale, we're going to do that twist again. So strong legs, but no tension, okay? Strong core. Turn your body to your twist, to your right side. So maybe the first time we're just twisting 45 degrees, making sure your belly is still kind of facing the front. Switching over to the other side. Good, inhale, getting softer. Exhale, twist a little bit deeper. So lower dantian facing the front. One more time, inhale and exhale. Great, and just letting yourself on twist. Definitely got warm with those two, right? So simple. All right, so take your time. Whatever you need, just roll out any kinks. We're gonna practice a few minutes of standing meditation. If you need to sit, that's okay too, okay? Relax the body, calm the mind. Toes pointing forward, feet firmly planted. You know, softly sink the hips. And again, if you can, do a little bit of a posterior tilt so then the back is straighter. So we try to eliminate that curve a little bit. The front gets shorter if you want. If you haven't done this with me before, it's always a good gauge. So middle finger right above the pubic bone, thumb right into the navel. And then when you're doing the posterior tilt, you can feel that distance getting shorter. You're contracting your abdominal muscle. And then once you're there, just kind of relax. You're going to relax into our uji stance or uji, right? U just means no. Ji means like extreme. So there's no extreme. We're just in the center, right? And taking your time. So where your mind goes, energy flows, a lot of our attention is really on the outside world. So for this reason, if you can, when you're practicing standing meditation, you can either look straight ahead without really focusing on one point. So that's why you probably shouldn't be looking at the screen. Maybe just follow my, listen to my voice, um, keeping the field of vision expensive. Otherwise, keeping your posture still upright. You can gaze down. If you are super comfortable, you know you're stable and you won't fall asleep standing. <laughs> I've seen students doing that <laughs> in class. So you can also gently just close your eyes. So making sure you are equally supported, left and right side. Comfortable breathing. You can lightly touch the tip of your tongue against the back of the upper teeth. And inhale, cool, fresh healing energy through the nose. And exhale, so two options. If there's still stagnant energy inside, you feel some heaviness, you can exhale out through your mouth while you're making that connection, right? Tip of your tongue against the back of the upper teeth. We're connecting the conception vessel and the governing vessel to create that microcosmic circuit in the body this way. So you can exhale out through your mouth or if you're very meditative, inhale, exhale through your nose. So 
So stacking up your ears over the shoulders, shoulders over the hips, arms naturally hanging comfortably by your side, no tension, and hips stacked over the knees and knees over the ankles. Uh, we're accumulating healing energy coming up from Mother Earth through the balls of your feet to first point on the kidney meridian channel. Okay, bubbling spring or yong quan. Feel that subtle, subtle healing vibration okay, coming up, healing our ankles, our knees, hip joints. Lower abdomen, your lower dantian. And from there, up along the spine, reaching your middle dantian. If there's any tension in the shoulders or the neck area, feel free to just maybe roll the shoulders up and back. You don't have to be stiff when we're in this posture. It is very much an active posture, active in the way that we are connected, we are feeling the breath, we're accumulating healing energy into the lower abdomen, we're drawing from the top of the head that pure cosmic energy coming down from the universe, that pure unconditional love in through the crown of your head, Bai Hui, or the points where hundreds of meridians converge to your brainstem. Our upper dantian. And let the healing energy trickle down. Your brainstem, your spinal cord. And we're gonna take a breath right here when you're ready. And slowly lift the arms up. We'll just hold the universal posture for a little bit. So if you ever want to get into standing meditation, Wuji stands, it's a very easy one to get into. You're not actually just simply standing there doing nothing. You are using your mind to bring your, you know, bring your intention, bring your focus inside to accumulate healing energy. So with your arms in front of you, we'll take a few breaths here. Okay, inhale. And exhale. So this is called universal posture. You can also gaze between the fingers. So always tune into your body, paying attention to what you're feeling as we are practicing with energy. So sometimes when you're practicing energy meditation, if you tend to feel lightheaded, that means a lot of times that energy circulation is not quite harmonious yet. So make sure you are, if you need to take a seat or take a sip of water, anything like that's okay, right? So Make sure you're, you're upright or you're seated down if that's happening. Um, you can also ground your energy <clears throat> sorry, by planting your feet a little bit more or crunch your toes. And also you can squeeze your sphincter muscle, right? Tighten your anus a little bit. That'll help you to ground the energy around your perineum, your root chakra area. So um, it's where we feel safe and secure, grounded and rooted. So make sure you're not leaking energy. So taking your time, inhale. Feel your belly expanding with vitality, strength, and creativity. Exhale. We let go of what no longer serves and keeping what helps. And again, inhale. When you exhale, gently draw your hands closer towards your lower abdomen, lower dantian. Good. And then one more breath in. When you exhale, we're going to use energy. I'll show you my side. We're not touching the belly, but slowly just kind of 
with energy from your hands up on your right, down on your left. We're gonna send healing energy to our lower abdomen and planting your hands on your lower dantian and rub again. Breathe, sending lots of gratitude to your healthy body. All right, and give yourself a nice sweet chest to belly, so your vagus nerve, right, it helps you to calm, that's your parasympathetic nervous system, and those are our conception vessels right here, okay, all right, gently shake out, and then you can roll the ankles and circle, um, if this is your first time ever meeting brush, knee, twist, stab, I'm gonna just show you, it's really just three steps, but there's so much packed in this one, that's why I wanted to really unpack it today, um, it has a component of um, tai chi, slow walking, so if I were to teach you this one, you're following me in class, we're doing back view. We would have done like our first move. Um, you know, we did the opening. We would do, you know, um, our part of the wild horse's mane. And then we would have ended up right here, right? So after part of the wild horse's mane, we're actually going to end number three because we're working on number four. <laughs> number three is your Y crane spreads wings. So this posture, you kind of recognize, this is what we practiced before, your empty foot stance. Okay, so from here. So this is what your brush knee twist up. And that first one, gonna brush, twist. Second step, sinking back, open the front foot. Step out and brush. Don't worry, we're gonna break everything down, okay? Third step. Am I still inside the screen? Yes. <laughs> That's it, just three steps. But there's so much to unpack here. Okay, all right, so let's practice our lower body first. I think it's so important to get the bowl stands correct. So um, if we're back view, right? So if we're back view, we start here, we start, we're gonna be right here. Starting from, we did this, so we're gonna bring everything back. So let's start from here with our feet about hip width apart. And then your feet, they're gonna be on two separate tracks. Just remember for your bow stance, okay? So bow stance, let me see from here, from here, from here. Okay, so left foot is gonna go forward. And you're gonna slowly sink a little bit pour your weight into your left leg, open your right foot a little, we're gonna shift the weight over into the right leg, okay? So bring your left toes closer to your right foot. We're gonna step out to the left side and you're getting into your bow stance. So you're gonna slowly from here, roll your foot down from the heel to the toes. And then as you shift the weight forward, when you get to bow and arrow stance, right? Bow and arrow stands about 60% of the weight is on the front, about 40 is on the back. We are not locking the back knee, okay? All right, so just slowly shift your weight back a little bit. Open, tip that front foot, open the foot. And from here, you're actually going to turn your torso slightly to your left side. You can see, right? So 45 degrees to your left side. And then open your pelvis, your hip joints, step your right foot slightly to the right side. So the whole time you know you're not on the same track, you're going to step to, if it's on a clock, kind of like two o'clock, right, position, as you roll your foot, you're going to slowly pivot a little bit. So this back foot, you're going to pivot, I'm just remember I'm not off, <laughs> right, pivot on the ball of your foot. So when you get into your bow stance, you're going to feel so strong, the back foot is actually your anchor. Okay, we're gonna do one more. So as you sink yourself back, we're just slowly stacking up all of these, or adding a little bit. You're gonna shift the way back, but what you're doing now, when you shift the way back, if you can, open your back hip joint. So externally rotate a little bit, it's gonna help you. So if you sink here, sometimes that knee doesn't feel good. So you want to make sure the knee is accommodated. So a little gentle rotation on the ball of your left foot, and then you're sitting back. So when we're sitting, I see this sometime in my class. So sometimes when we're sitting back this way, right? In Tai Chi, there's no excess, there's no insufficiency. 
So sometimes people do this, right? This is no longer a sit. This is leaning. So try to keep your upper body upright, right? From your bow stance, this is the third step. Open the back hip. Tip the front foot. And then we're going to slowly open to the right. And from there, as you shift the weight over, right, this requires you to pour the weight now. Now we're going from the back to the front, 45 degrees. Just draw your foot. So you're not really stepping your foot completely down, but you're still weighted on the right leg. And this is going to give you the ability to step out with your left foot, heel down. And as you roll your foot, press. As you pivot on the back ball of your foot in 24, that's what we do. Pivot on the ball of the foot. 37, we do on the heel most of the time. Okay. This is your um, Tai Chi kind of like Tai Chi walking for the lower. I do have a video on this channel um, that's just breaking down the tai chi, tai chi walk. So you can practice that, which is really important. So this is the three steps and I'm just gonna face you. You stepped out with your left foot. Okay, I'm gonna be your mirror. <laughs> so we can break down this a little bit. Okay, so start from here, drop your tailbone, pour your weight into your left leg. Hopefully I'm doing this right. You're gonna open your right foot. Yes. Okay. So your left foot is going to come forward just right here because you know you're going to uh, take a step slowly to the side. So then I'm not going here. A lot of times what I see students do when they're stepping, they step straight to the front. And when they're doing that, what happens is that both their bow stance is very narrow. Um, you don't really feel stable. So make sure we stay stable here. Balance on the back foot, step your left foot out slightly to the side, but you're going to drop your foot down. Let me show, make sure my foot is still in the, in the screen. You're going to drop your foot down, roll from the ball of your foot to, sorry, heel to the ball of the foot. You can even roll down with a little bit of an internal rotation, like a little inversion with your foot. So when you land, you're going to feel really stable right there, okay? So feel it right here. That's your first step with your left foot. Now we're mirror images of each other. And then the next step, soften the back knee. If you can, do a little bit of external rotation. Open. So now we're going to turn, right? Pivot the left, ball of the foot. And then over here, Tai Chi is great for balance, right? Bring your back foot forward, right? Just touching toes. And then slowly step I need a bigger living room. <laughs> okay, so right foot on the front. Same thing. As you pour the weight, this side. Okay, all right. Shift the weight back. Open. Right foot. I got to backtrack. <laughs> and then your left foot to the front. Pivot. Good. You're straight again. You do not see my foot. Okay, right here. <laughs> All right, taking your time. It's shaking out your legs a little bit. Okay, hopefully that's okay. We'll do one more time this side and we'll add the, I'll show you the arms, okay? Yeah, we're gonna start from here. We're forgetting about the upper, bar, upper body. Okay, softly bend your knees and then slowly from here, pour the weight into your, we'll do the same side now, okay? So pour your weight into your left leg. We open the right foot. Bring your left foot in, toes tug. So torso slightly to the left, to your right side. Step out, right, on that track, the left railroad track. And then as you move through your center, what's happening is that you are going to turn from the ball of your foot and then your pelvis is going to face forward, right? So right here, your front of your pelvis. And when we sink back to protect your back knee, Pivot on the ball of your foot a little bit. Open the front foot and slowly glide yourself over. And then open the right foot. Foot straight down, not to the side. That's the other mistake. Sometimes people tend to, you know, because, oh, I'm stepping to the right. I'm going to shoot over towards the right, right? Just because you're putting your foot down at 2 o'clock doesn't mean that your torso is facing 2 o'clock. Right, so right here, because this is a, a yang stance, right? So in a yang or in a yang, how you pronounce it in English, um, this is you attacking somebody, your enemy is right here, you wanna face them. 
And when you're retreating, the reason we're going to shift back a little bit, right? You're actually making yourself a smaller target with the upper body. And we're going to slowly open that foot again, smaller target because we're not ready yet. Step out left, pour your weight through. And then when you're ready, you're going to face them. You're going to face your obstacles. <laughs> okay. All right. Coming back, shake out. Shake, shake, shake. All right. Relax. Hopefully this makes sense. Okay. And if you're like, oh, I, I, it's so hard just doing lower, lower body. So like I said, beginner's mind, we're just going to learn half and we'll learn um, the upper body now. Okay. Taking your time. Hopefully I can do this all with a mirror image. Um, so let's see. Okay. Actually, let, let's do the side first. So this is your <laughs> white crane spreads wings. You're going to actually let your right hand just do this with me as if we're in class doing back view, okay? So this one, your right hand is gonna come down. Left hand is gonna come up. So like I said, we're gonna do with all the legs, we're just gonna stand, okay? So from here, right hand comes down, kind of do like a circle. And left arm comes up. And when this arm comes over here, we're going to start to turn the torso slightly to the right side. Your right arm is going to come up. And then you're folding the hand, right? So your right, let me come over here. Your left hand comes over. Right hand comes up. So one hand down, one hand up. Left hand is going to come to the inside of the elbow right here. Maybe I should face you, but I get so confused. <laughs> I could do mirror image for Qigong and yoga. This is still, still takes practice. I will turn around, I promise. Okay, so right here. And then the next step, we're going to slowly, you're going to take your right hand, touch your ear, left hand comes to in front of your belly. And then the last um, when we're doing the brush knee, what you're doing with the upper body, you're actually turning the torso from your core. The front hand is a brush knee. What's happening if we're doing the whole body, you're brushing somebody's leg if they're kicking you or a weapon, right? So this is that brush knee with the upper body. That's what you're doing with that hand. But we're just feeling it right now. So from here, the turn from the torso helps you to brush that bottom knee away, bottom leg away. The top hand is gonna be here and you're ready to meet your opponent with the front hand. And where the hand is lending, you are going to, right? You have to do that switch in your mind, <laughs> right? So you're facing the right side, brush the knee and your hand is gonna come to in front of you. So kind of like the space um, in between like your collarbone, your chest, to your uh, shoulder. So it's not on the outside because this person in front of you, you're really doing this, right? Get off of me, right? Like <laughs> leg away and then you're gonna push them away. But everything's from your core. Right now for this pose and later when we're doing the whole body, it's gonna come from your leg. So it's this motion. If you don't mind, just try this a little bit. You should feel your core, your obliques working. And then, right? So we went from here, pushing forward. It's going to land in front of you again, between like the chest and then the shoulder, not outside, not too much in. Okay. That's the first move. It's hard not to move the legs. <laughs> okay. And then next one, we're going to start to slowly, it gets easier, right? The first one is a little bit more moves. And then the next one, you're going to do this. So this is on the other side, left hand comes up, right hand comes to the inside of the elbow. And when this hand comes over to touch the ear, left hand to the left ear, you're pressing your right hand down. And that last push, the brush knee comes, right? We're going to twist the torso. As you brush the knee, you're twisting, right? Twist up and you're pressing forward. And one more on the other side, just the same thing. Gently turn your body, right? Same thing, left hand on the right elbow. And then from there, hand on the ear, by the ear. And then as we twist, that's from your center. So two left side and one right side. So we end on the left side. 
Okay, let me face you. I don't know if I can do the mirror image, so I'm just going to do the same side. So do a little switcheroo in your mind <laughs> with me, okay? All right, so if we started it this side, right? So your, your um, white crane spreads wings. You're going to slowly from here, right, right arm comes in. Yeah, this one has a little bit more. And then as this hand presses down, left hand is going to come over. You're going to end up right here with your right hand facing up, left hand on the inside of the elbow. Next move, as you bring your hand closer to your ear, the other hand, left hand is gonna be in front of the belly. The twist as you brush the bottom knee, you're gonna press. If you can, I wish I had a camera up top. So on the front, we are not collapsed, we're not elongated, right? So it's a nice, Kind of like if you remember the pose we did, if I flip my palm down, this is half of your um, universal posture. So have this space for you, right? Like when you're dancing. <laughs> this is my space, so that's your space <laughs> right there. Okay, next one. Your left hand is going to come up. Right hand comes to the inside of the elbow. Bending the elbow. Hand press down. And then as we press... You're going to do a little bit of turn and twist from the core. I promise this will make more sense when we're doing both uh, upper and lower. Okay, one more. Right side, right hand up, left hand down, touch a ear, turn from your center, and press forward. Okay, this is the front view, not mirror image. <laughs> okay, all right, let's do both, upper and lower, okay? All right, this should feel so much better. Ready? Right here, starting from third. If you don't, if you haven't done anything here, don't worry about it. Okay, this is your white crane spreads wings or Bai Hu Liang Zhi, a really beautiful Tai Chi move. So from here, what we're going to do, legs are not going to move yet. This is that first move. So your right hand comes in, left hand lift to the elbow. As you bring your body in, right, to this side, we're going to draw the left leg in as your right arm lifts over here. And you're kind of looking to the right, right? If I look at you, if I'm facing you this side, this is what's happening, right? I turn to my side, your torso slightly to the right side. As we bend the elbow, press the hand, you're going to slowly get ready to land your left foot on the front, but we're still weighted on the back. And that turn that we did before we practice, you're gonna brush the front knee and because you, you practiced this before, you're pivoting on the back ball of your foot. Feel this. Turn from your center. Brush the knee. Twist step. And there's a connection from the heel of your palm. Connection from the heel of your palm. Right? Keep feeling shoulder, your hip, all the way to the back heel. Right? Outer edge of your foot. But what we're not doing, we're also not can't really see my baggy pants. We're not locking that knee. So remember the 70% rule, right? So, but there's that connection. Okay. I go back to the back view. Sorry. Just wanted to make you <laughs> see a little bit. Okay. So we're going to go two more steps. Pour yourself, pour your weight back. Open the front foot. Left hand comes up. Right. This is where you are. Your body slightly to the left side. I know this is super slow motion. <laughs> step, brush knee, twist step. I feel it. At the end of that push, it feels so strong. And then again, we get, we, we get softer, right? Towards the end, you're going to transition. And brush knee, twist step. Okay, so usually traditional, just three steps. We're gonna take one more since I have one more, one more space. <laughs> That's how we're doing moving drill. If we have room, we're outside together, we can actually like do moving drill, keep walking. It's, you really get to feel this, okay? So when you're ready, shift the way back. This is extra, right? This is not in the thing. So once you're here, you can look over the left hand. You're weighted on the left foot. 
hand by the ear, getting ready, and then into your bow stance. So from here, you are going forward, okay? All right, so I'm gonna backtrack. We'll do that again, a little bit smoother, a little bit faster. Shake out again. <laughs> All right, ready? Okay, your wide crane spreads wings, really strong and stable. All right, ready? Okay, so this part, your leg is not really moving yet because we're gonna finish, not finish, but go over to this side, okay? Draw your left foot in. Sink back, open the front foot. Shift the weight. Second one. Pivot the back ball of the foot, protect your back knee. Open the front foot. Elbow by your hand. Hand by the ear. And third, brush knee. All right, we'll do one more, okay? Take your time. I wish I have a bigger space to show you. <laughs> okay, right here. We do with what we have, okay? Ready. Legs don't move yet. When the left hand comes over here, right, when the left hand comes in, you're going to draw your left foot in. Look to the right side. Bend the elbow. Step out. Brush knee. Twist step one. Go really slow. Second. And third. Yeah, I'll squeeze in one more. Okay, bend and twist. Okay, All right. take your time. Breathing in and breathing out. Gently shake it out. We'll do one more round. Um, and then if you have questions, I know I know there are oh, 14, 15 of you here maybe. Um, and then, so give me, um, there's one more shot over here. And then if you have questions, you can put it into the chat. And maybe we have time to practice from the beginning to wh whatever move you want to see. Okay. Row the shoulders up and back. This is your Y crane spreads wings. Okay, if you need a different view, I can also turn around to look at you, okay? When the hand comes in. Second step. Just three steps, okay? Take your time, inhale, exhale. I'm gonna go this side so you can see it if you missed anything on the other side. Um, this would have been if I started facing you, like a performing demo style, okay? So white crane spreads wings. Okay, let's go back a little bit. To the left. Brush me. Twist up, pivot. I need a little bit more room. <laughs> okay, that is the third one. Inhale. Exhale. Okay. All right. I don't know if Daisy's still here. Hope, hopefully this was helpful. Um, so let me know in the chat if you have any questions. We can practice um, a few more moves if you want to follow along, maybe from the first one to this one. Um, and then let me know how I can support you with your practice. I sent out um, a poll a few weeks ago. And so I might have to do another one just to see like what it is that 
uh, thank you for the thumb up, Daisy. <laughs> yes, uh, just to see how it is that like, you need, right? Because everybody's at different steps. So it's a little bit tricky to catch everybody up if we're just doing these like one-off things. So, but this is something I wanted to do for a while. And this is just an opportunity. We can kind of break everything down. Maybe eventually I will do a Zoom so I can see you and I can help you a little bit more. But for now, um, if you have questions, throw it in the chat. If not, we can do from the first one to the fourth one, right? From the beginning to here. And then for those of you that you've been practicing for a while, maybe that'll help you just string everything together instead of just doing one move, um, you know? Okay, all right, so let me turn around. So this is back view. And you can see how this form kind of flows, right? Maybe to the fifth one, I don't know. To relax the body, calm the mind. Softly bend your knees. Right, so come into Uji Sans, your starting posture, inhale, exhale, second move, right, this is where we started with our bow and arrow stance with the parting the wild horses made, I probably have to backtrack, but Right, this one is a little bit easier. Your arm is, front arm is lined up with the front leg. Okay, yeah, I need to backtrack. <laughs> Hopefully you don't have to. Okay, so from here, half step forward, hold the ball. Your white crane spreads wings. So we kind of do a little bit of twisting from the center for white crane. Everything builds up one on top of the other. This is the brush knee we just learned. Balance and coordination. Right, we can just add one more so you know what's to come. So we do another half step. And we're getting to another empty foot stance, but now this time the heel is down, toe is lifted for playing the lute, right? So take your time, inhale and exhale. Do you wanna do one more or you wanna see more? <laughs> do, you wanna do, do you wanna see the whole form? The whole form takes six minutes. We probably have time, but it depends on what you want. If you wanna do just the, the drill, we can actually do a few more rounds of drills. I guess maybe we do a little bit of drills, okay? So from here, your white crane spreads wings. Okay. So you're gonna find your flow. Tai Chi is harder when you have to do it slower. It forces you to really feel the intricacy of each movement. How do I stay connected? So when we're practicing the drill, we really just keep going. As long as you have room, right? So you can keep just feeling, right? How do I go ahead and sink back, open the front foot, look at that hand, bend the elbow, step into the brush knee again. Right, let's say you're you're there you with your right leg on the front. We're just gonna keep going a few more times. Little soft bend in the back knee. So when you're here, your torso slightly to the left side. When the elbow comes in, hand goes down, you're getting ready, but we're still weighted on the back leg. Right, that's why Tai Chi helps you to get stronger. We're constantly shifting the weight left to right. There's no time, right? except at the beginning, at the very end, we are equally weighted. It's actually called double weighting. It's a no-no in Tai Chi when you're 50-50 on both sides. Okay, all right, taking your time, breathing in and breathing out. All right, hopefully that was helpful for you. And then I'm curious to see what it is, um, you know,
that maybe some moves you want to work together or hopefully these foundational blocks can help you to, um, you know, improve your Tai Chi practice and really takes a lot of time. Um, Daisy said, yeah, so practice takes a long time. It, it does, right? So it's ideal if you can practice Tai Chi twice a day. So once in the morning, once at night. And really this whole form, if you learn it, it's six minutes. So you can practice that for sure, right? So rub your back, your middle back area, sending lots of healing energy to your kidneys. And then just give yourself a little light drumming and tap for your lower back. So what I'm doing, just using this part, right? So the thumb side of your fist, loose fist, and just tap out from your back to your sacrum. At your sacrum, you know, the upside down triangular bone. Breathing out. Tapping there a little bit. Yeah, tapping the hip joints. Yeah, so if you use the steps I was teaching you about the pivoting, your knees should feel really good. I remember when I first started t uh, learning Tai Chi, like I would feel my knees sore at the end of the class. That's because I didn't really, I, you know, I didn't really learn um, the proper way to pivot. So now it just, your knees can only get stronger as you practice Tai Chi. Unlike what I heard is like, there, you know, I don't know how many people, like millions of uh, Tai Chi practitioners, practitioners in the whole world, 70% of them have knee problems. So that's not to say Tai Chi is the one at fault, but that is something to be mindful when you're practicing Tai Chi. How do you protect your knees? How do I pivot my foot, whether it's on the ball of the foot or on the heel, even if sometimes you have to do like one extra step to complete the term, right? Sometimes maybe something as simple as like, I don't know if it's simple, right? Just like a kick, right? If you can't um, complete it, you know, like a whole big, whole big kick and just figure out how can I do it, right? How can I do it to honor my body and, you know, still be able to benefit from this healing practice? So tap your hip joints a little bit and then just give your opposite shoulder a little light tapping. I usually like to end class with a little body tapping just to release any, you know, stagnant energy, um, we are, you know, at the end of the practice, we're always going to grab all of this positive energy from all around, but also we are, right? We're asking our body to do something right? that's helping us to be stronger, but at the same time, there's some stagnant energy we're collecting. Tap the top of the shoulder, circle your shoulder joint, your rotator cuff, tap down the top of your arm. So as if you're going to come over to shake my hand, your lung channel all the way to the thumb. So lots of healing energy to your body, sleep. And then the other side, so top of the shoulder first. If you're pregnant, don't do this, right? This part, it helps to drain energy too much and you can just kind of maybe rub your shoulder or just go ahead and tap your um, rotator cuff, okay? Tap the top. The rest of us, tap away. It helps you to drain uh, tension. This is called shoulder well, um, acupressure point. Releases the tension, okay? Your rotator cuff, top down, thumb, very good. Sleep down. Relax the shoulders. You're going to make chicken arms. <laughs> so um, side of your forearm, just lightly tap. Draw on the sides right here. That's the end of your spleen meridians. So there's a point that's there. Help us to right, release stagnant energy. We hold uh, sometimes depression. <sighs> Exhale out. Okay. From here, be gentle with your back, your kidneys. We're just going to rub up down the best you can. The kidneys are kind of like being held by the bottom of the ribs. So we're just gonna do the best we can to rub lots of peace inside and then tap the back side of the legs, your bladder channel, front, shins, your knees. Thank you, my healthy knees. <laughs> outer hip, outer thigh, gallbladder coming in, spleen channel, liver. I'm just gonna tap around. You can tap your hip crease a little bit too. So lymph nodes. Oh, hi. Thank you, Kay. And Maurice. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad you enjoy it. Okay. Rubbing your belly clockwise. Yeah. Stay connected. I'm going to probably throw some other posts, but yeah, just you can, I know on YouTube is a little hard to have a conversation. I'm, I'm also on IG, same thing, Jenny Lu Yoga. So if you want, you can, you know, DM me over there. Um, if you have questions over here, sense, um, you know, ask me questions under the videos. Um, I will do my best to keep improving. Um, so enjoy your practice. Enjoy your beautiful weekend. I appreciate you so much. Um, 
if you want, I do have the whole entire playlist of 24, um, Tai Chi 24. So everything broken down step by step. Um, I really spent a lot of time on those. So enjoy those videos and let me know what uh, you would like to see, what else you want to see, break down, uh, unpack a form or something like that. And um, yeah, let's keep, let's keep getting stronger and keep getting healthier, um, more centered together. Okay. So thank you so much for your time. And then um, it's always great to, to be, to be together with Tai Chi practitioners. So Thank you so much. Sending you lots of good energy. I will see you next time. Okay. All right. I have something else next week. <laughs> next next month. Take care, everybody. Thank you, Daisy. Okay, and Maurice.